Hello everyone and welcome back to Around the World in 80 Planes and X-Plane 11. For this flight I am flying the Cirrus Vision SF-50, the default X-Plane 11 Cirrus Vision SF-50. And a nicer plane you couldn't have. It's my favorite plane among the default planes. And uh, the cockpit is nice, it even has a weight balance thing down there. I don't know if it's actually functional or not. Uh, but the map there is nice and uh, yep, it's a cool little interior and of course the world's cutest exterior. Um, I just really find it very cute. So, yep, yep, we're gonna fly this over to Sapporo. I was New Chitose Airport in Hokkaido. I don't know why this runway suddenly has yellow stripes. It, we've got an overcast today, so we still got uh, real world weather going. But yeah, I don't understand yellow stripes. This is uh, Sendai Airport, saying that we landed at. Uh, that runway behind us, uh, which is I think the runway we landed at, also has yellow stripes suddenly. Maybe it's just a thing. Alright, well anyway, uh, we are continuing with the Apollo 13 audio that we have been listening to. They have made their burn to return home, and uh, we will continue. I don't expect a whole lot of audio during the return journey, but we'll see. Uh, because, after all, they're trying to save power and everything. So, here we go, starting up that. After I press play, sometimes it okay, takes a little while. Uh, okay. On the, uh, fifth line, it we they're talking the, further uh, procedures. Control, uh, and here we go. This is very quiet in the exterior. Okay, we'll check into that one. Might want to turn it up, but, but then again, the you know, it sort of fits its general motif. It's swinging okay, around and, a bit. Uh, top uh, row is uh, correct as is. Second row. We want the, Whoa, uh, okay. Uh, one I've been having a lot of on the, uh, third row, we waiting too long to pull up, rows. I think. So we need to turn that away. We didn't really no pass problem. by Sendai last time. The city. Okay, continue, Ben. Okay. Next page, power seven, panel sixteen. Okay, 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 okay. I get you want to pitch row. up. Trimming down. Close the four quad TCA circuit breakers. That is quad one TCA, quad two, quad three, and quad four TCA. Okay, so this Sendai. Okay, rows two, three, and four are okay. And the sort of blinking is the cloud layer causing lighting problems. Okay, panel 16, top row. We want to close quad one through four, TCA breakers. And you're saying the other three rows are as is. Uh, again, this is actually just, just a suburb of Sendai. Control the main city is over to the north. Okay, we uh, concur on that, and uh, we have a, a late arrival in row three. Stand by. Okay, uh, Fred, uh, one addition, third row, the uh, S-band power amp. Request that you uh, pull that circuit breaker and leave the switch in primary. Okay, uh, yeah, that's the way we were doing it before. I'll pull the uh, power amp uh, CB, and then I'll go back to the first page and uh, put the uh, power amp to uh, prime. I wouldn't mind a reality expansion uh, pack for this plane. Should be changed back to prime. Would be interesting. But so far, they only have them for propeller planes, I think. Apollo Control, Houston, 79 hours. Oop, oh, you got interrupted. Thank you. <laughs> 51 minutes into the flight, uh, that was uh, Vance Brand uh, going through a checklist with the Apollo 13 crew uh, for procedures and powering down uh, the systems. We'll fly a little bit higher than last time this time. Okay, 
Well, but it'll depend on the clouds. Okay, you want to get your breakers, Jim? So here's the city of Sendai. This is the heart of the city. We now show 13 at 6,515 nautical miles out. Okay, the bus tire burners are coming off the line. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, uh, let me just briefly pause and try and get the sound. Perfect exterior. I don't know if that'll help. Well, that gives us a little bit. Very soft. Well, we're nowhere near a uh, red line on the hey, throttle, Jeff, so I'll well, throttle up. I was at 75% as sort of normal after takeoff. Okay, I see. Uh, I don't know. That's not really a red line. It's the end of a white line. Okay. Uh, Guess we can push it past that. That's uh, affirmative. Pull the VHF A receiver. Okay. This eye point is a little bit low to see okay. the landscape from in here, though. I could shift myself up, but uh, once I go to the external view, it would reset anyway. Zoom out the map. Oh, okay, we don't want to turn left here. Look at that fellow. Okay, clouds. We don't need to keep it up now, do we? Okay, Fred, that's one that we're leaving up until the PTC is established. We have a procedure for PTC to try with you, which uh, we're hopeful will work pretty well, and I'll read that up as soon as you uh, get what you're doing now done. Okay. Oh, why don't you go ahead and I'll get this PTC procedure. Get by the foot of log and I'll just get that. It's sort of nice to have the clouds today. It uh, makes for uh, a much more scenic flight up here. That's a great view, really. Okay, let me get back in the cockpit and see. It doesn't look like we're coming anywhere close to red lines. But we're accelerating pretty fast now. Well, because we are going down briefly. Retrimming. Now, here comes the PTC procedure. Step one, guidance control to pings. 
two. Boat control at hold. Verb 76 and Oh, there's the red line, 250. Okay, I can deal with that. Maneuver to PTC attitude. And that, incidentally, is roll zero, pitch 90, and present yaw. We realize you can't monitor that on your your FDAI, but you can on a verb with a verb 16 noun 20. With me? Right, Skype control pig, both control at hold, verb 76 enter. Okay, looks like uh, we can see the tops of the fluffy clouds. Okay, next. Mode con at uh, when you're established at the attitude, mode control auto. Key in verb 16, noun 20 to monitor rates. When less than 0.1 degree a second, rate in all in e in each axis. Then disable plus X thrusters. Okay, next, verb 25, noun 07, enter. One, two, five, seven, enter. 252 enter. One enter. Okay. Enter. Well, we're just going to be flying over northern Japan. Enter. I don't know a whole lot of places up here. Uh, put in the DAP 22110 and proceed. Should be still scenic though. Verb three four enter. Then verb one six noun two zero and monitor rates. On rates less than point zero one degrees per second in all axes. Verb 76, enter. Mode control at hold. Oh, well, we got a brief look at what the landscape looked like underneath the clouds, but it looks better with the clouds, to be honest. I'm going for 18,000 feet. Uh, correct one point uh, 
yaw should be your present yaw, whatever it is. Uh, and that's up with roll zero, pitch 90, uh, present yaw. The other thing is, you said disable and you didn't hear the rest. That's disable plus X thrusters. And finally, near the end, the 22110 referred to DAP loading. Yep. Roger. Uh, it looks like in this area the clouds have been baked into some of the textures. Could try and find better versions. Oh, we're going higher than I wanted. For those not familiar with this series, of course, I'm not using autopilot at all, uh, ever. Jim, uh, Roger, your use of the TC TTCA, and uh, just a reminder that uh, in maneuvering that, that that roll is an R3 and the yaw is an R1. That's a firm, and I'm going to take out roll first to get it zero, then I'm going to uh, take care of pitch. Okay. Okay, guys, control things. Load control for at home. Just another. Go ahead. Okay, a uh, couple of things, Jim. Uh, one is that uh, you can use the TTCAs to uh, maneuver, but you're going to save a lot of fuel if you'd uh, try minimum impulse. So uh, that might be a better recommendation. The other thing is uh, we'd like to give you a go before you disable the plus S X thrusters. And before you do a verb 76 and mode control. Being a little bit fast there. Over. wanted to do was uh, take a look at, at things before uh, you disable the plus X thrusters and before you uh, go to min impulse at the end there that verb 76 enter mode control at hold. Roger, understand and uh, I'm maneuvering my roll now to uh, zero. Roger. Yeah, 
plus X, right. The trim levels don't really allow me to get it exactly where I want it, but it'll be all right. Some combination of trim and throttles will work eventually by the time we get there. Okay, Fred. Uh, we didn't explain that. Uh, the verb 25 noun 07 enter sequence does that. Okay, I didn't read the whole procedure. Uh, Jim just mentioned he wanted to disable plus X. Okay. And, uh, uh, Vance, are you still trying to give me an answer on that uh, pulling an ASA breaker? Uh, that's affirmed, Fred. Uh, this word here is pull it. Ags is a Apollo guidance system. They're working in the LEM, uh, so different system. I forget how it sorts out. They've got the pings, which is a different one. Okay, just some uh, info. We're working up a procedure. There's a lake down to, there. To use um, command module LIOH canisters. Uh, ah, that's a bit too small to figure out which one it is. So that as time passes in the mission, you can continue scrubbing the LEM atmosphere. And this whole thing requires uh, uh, modifying uh, a kit so that you can attach uh, the hose well maybe I can look up I Google Maps so you can attach the hose to it so sometime in the future we'll be coming up to you with that procedure uh, second point 
Second point is uh, we're standing by to watch your maneuver for the uh, PTC procedure. Okay, I'm in process now, uh, Vance, of uh, maneuvering to zero yaw, 90 degrees pitch, uh, using of impulse. Okay. Okay, I think we're next to the city of Morioka. I think the lake was Gosho Lake. basically going up the center, the spine of the island. I think they're putting together the thing to solve the CO2 problem. We, uh, Is that right? One canister with a uh, about plastic about roof. Houston, 80 hours, uh, 27 minutes, Apollo 13, now 8,137 nautical miles out from the moon, and uh, presently traveling at a speed of... data uh, on uh, your movements right now. Uh, how does it look like this procedure is going to work out so far as getting uh, an attitude uh, set up for the first part of the procedure? Well, uh, man, I've been trying to use a bit of impulse only attitude control to uh, get my roll in the off, the roll of pitch rather. But with the attitude control only in this configuration, I, uh, I can't uh, command you to roll the way I want to. So I had to go to the TTCA to get my roll to build up towards zero. It was going to decrease it towards uh, 270. Yep, uh, don't want to turn that much. I really don't know what the combination is with the attitude control. If you can get the control to pitch your roll the way you want to. You've got to use the TTCA. Roger, copy. Uh, we just got 
got a mass alarm and an ECS uh, light, I take it the um, partial pressure CO2 is, uh, yeah, that's what tripped it. Okay, so they're having CO2 problems, all right. Or it might be because they're trying to rig the thing that they got the problem. Okay. Go ahead. Hey Jim, uh, we're gonna have to get back with you in a couple Hang minutes. Hang out at 18,000 uh, feet we still, but we're at the uh, very northern end of Honshu, and I'm it might help waiting to see up this PTC the strait between Honshu and Hokkaido. And get that going. Should be in front of us soon. And, uh, so you can look inside at the fish. map. We the are established. here. And you can sort of see. Take whatever yaw you get. Okay, uh, the band they tried that, but uh, when I started doing it roll only, I get pitched a couple of them with it. Yeah, I mean, because of the placement of the thrusters on the lunar module and the fact that they're not meant to steer both the lunar module and the command module and service module, anytime they try and steer the thing, it's going to have, you know, unintended rotational consequences. So, that's what he's grappling with, basically. stiffener 
at the top so the plastic doesn't suck against the LOI, LIOH enter, entrance. LIOH, the lithium hydroxide that clears to, uh, the CO2 up. You need gray tape to stick the whole thing together. And you need something like a sock to put in the, the bottom so that uh, the outlet side is plugged up. As it turns out, the flow is uh, rather U-shaped through the cartridge fret. I but, uh, if you plug up the bottom, it uh, comes in one side of the top and goes out the other. I guess I'm sort of assuming everybody already knows this story, but the thing is the lunar module has a way to clear CO2, obviously, but it only had a certain amount of lunar module canisters to clear the CO2 because, you know, they weren't supposed to spend a whole lot of time in there. Most of the canisters were in the command module, but the command module had a different CO2 clearing system with different canisters because they were made by a different manufacturer. Uh, Grumman made the lunar module and North American made the command module. So the two weren't compatible and they're trying to figure out how to use the command module canisters in the lunar module and so they're sort of making a uh, a way to make them compatible. This is usually summarized as trying to fit a round peg into a square hole or a square peg into a round hole. Clouds seem to be clearing up somewhat. Okay, we see the coast there. Loud and clear now. Go ahead. That uh, city to our left is Aomori. Literally uh, blue forest. Or green. The uh, Ao is, uh, could be blue or green instead of blue green. And this is actually a bay, Mutsu Bay, because there's a peninsula that curves around and an outlet. We should be flying towards Hakodate.
course, uh, the star of the sleep period is dependent on uh, setting up uh, attitude uh, for uh, PTC. We're at 80 hours, uh, 51 minutes now into the flight, and this is Apollo Control, Houston. One, we have the tire chase there, Kenneth. Jim, it looks pretty good, except that the pitch is uh, going out in the wrong direction now. Over. Okay. Control Houston, 80 hours, 56 minutes. Apollo 13, now 9,400, uh, 20 nautical miles out from the moon. Velocity reading uh, 4,701 feet per second. Our uh, real-time uh, flight plan has just updated the start of the uh, rest period for Commander Jim Lovell and Jack Schweigert. That time now reading uh, 82 hours ground elapsed time. Jim Lovell still working uh, with establishing the proper attitudes uh, for uh, passive uh, thermal control. Apparently a uh, roll is pretty well nulled out. Still moving out a bit in the, the pitch axis. We're at 80 hours, 57 minutes into the flight, and this is Apollo Control, Houston. Well, we briefly got a look at the coast again. We're st still not over Hokkaido yet. Uh, let's go inside briefly. We're right at the mouth of the bay, as you can see. Oh, the weight and balance seems to have changed, so I guess it is sort of working. Good. Uh, 
Stand by a minute, Jim. Uh, the pitch is the important thing, uh, uh, but, but stand by one. Okay, it's coming down. Grab some food when you can. Yeah, the entire swing by the moon. Mo that's a really busy day for most of the crews, but especially for this one. And there's that, because so so the lem is cramped, and they have a lot of concerns, and yeah. Also, uh, I think they have one of the astronauts constantly in communication with and awake, and in communication with mission control while the others sleep. So, the others find it very difficult to sleep in that situation too. Otherwise, mostly uh, the crews all slept at the same time, but I don't think they're going with that for this cruise. Didn't didn't go for that for this crew so far, because of the problem. At least since the problem. I mean, while everything was going okay, they all slept okay, at the same Jim, time. Would you uh, stable your stabilize your rates here at the attitude you're at now and uh, go at hold? Over. Mm. Okay, will do. I'm now at 106 degrees, 106 degrees pitch, and 2.5 control. Roger. That's firm. We're monitoring, and uh, you're almost there, but uh, we'd like to let him stabilize a little bit longer. Over. There. Okay, well, this, well, this hole. And if, uh, if you can uh, now go into your eat period or do something else uh, while the rates are stabilizing, why uh, we recommend you relax over and uh, get some chow. Okay, we can see Hakodate now. Right there. Under the clouds. That's the first port city on Hokkaido. It's under the cloud now. So where we're trying to go is RJCC. That's RJCG. Oh, there's RJCC. Okay, that's our report. We presently show Apollo 13 at uh, 10,431 nautical miles out from the moon. It's a uh, velocity reading of 4,649 feet per second. A couple of points of clarification. The uh, master alarm on the uh, CO2 The airport is uh, sort of south to of to at, uh, some point Sapporo. I think Sapporo probably has at, its own uh, airport. At uh, 7. 
millimeters of CO2. But we're landing in New Chitose instead. Uh, this number chosen uh, as an alert to uh, watch the canisters. However, uh, the, the medical officials uh, had agreed. Medical officials had agreed that it would be desirable to raise uh, this number uh, on our return to 15 millimeters in order to preserve the lifetime of the canisters. Okay, well, Hakodate, you can sort of see MSC, down there now. The uh, level in laboratory testing uh, has. Sometimes if it gets a little choppy, Here, it's because I'm clicking MSC outside looking at a map. The, uh, levels, uh, using test subjects uh, have been as high as 22 millimeters of CO2 uh, with no ill effects. On our passive uh, thermal control, um, and uh, we have damped the rates at this point, uh, there has been an effort uh, on the part of the crew on the ground to uh, perform this uh, activity uh, with minimum use of RCS propellants. We're at uh, 81 hours at 21 minutes. Maybe you sort of think about rations and so I mean, just to make sure that we got enough to last us and that we uh, get enough water out. I hate to run out of water on the last day. Take a look and see how much we got and uh, fill them up and just hold them there. Yeah, and uh, I'll tell you, the stuff that's good to eat now will be the the candies, the sandwich spreads, maybe the the free, the, the uh, dehydrated stuff that you have to rehydrate is going to be kind of difficult. No, wet packs are good. Apollo Control Houston, 81 hours, uh, 27 minutes now to the flight of uh, Apollo 13. Apollo 13 now 10,776 nautical miles away from the moon, uh, headed towards the Earth, and uh, traveling at a speed of 4,633 feet per second. To uh, repeat, repeat our earlier comments, uh, the uh, master alarm on the CO2 canister uh, was expected uh, to occur at some point in the flight, uh, the return flight. It is normally set uh, for a level of uh, 7.6 uh, millimeters of CO2 to trigger the alarm. Uh, Jim, just a reminder, uh, any wastewater dumps uh, at this point would really uh, jiggle up the PTC preparation, so uh, request to uh, save that till we're spun up over. Well, I don't think we're doing any. No. <laughs> no, I don't think so, but uh, just wanted to make sure you were aware of it, and I, I thought you were. The uh, 6.7 level was established uh, to be aware and watch. Curious about the, the sort of uh, shadowing on uh, the body. Uh, you know, it green, seems like however, there's the red the area has like little burnt that, portions. Uh, to, uh, sure, it's supposed to be that way. To 15, uh, uh, maybe it CO2 is. In order to preserve the lifetime on these canisters. And. Uh, at MSC and the laboratories, uh, we have run tests with subjects uh, 
at levels up to two, 22 millimeters of CO2 uh, with no ill effects on these subjects. We're at uh, one hours, one hour at 20, uh, 81 hours, uh, 29 minutes into the flight, and this is Apollo Control, Houston. Oh, we're going a little bit fast and a little bit low. I guess we'll wait to descend. Or it's a judgment call at this point. this up to you. It's just that before you get too far in assembling these on your own, we'd kind of like to give you the benefit of uh, experience down here. Okay. Who, uh, they could have totally figured it out on their own. <laughs> uh, Tony uh, did some of it, and uh, Jack's been working on it too, so we've had a, a big effort on it. you to wait till tomorrow to receive that procedure but we can send it up sooner if you in insist or as they no, watch right. uh, the co2 we levels to, rise uh, well we have to worry about that i guess we got another uh, primary and uh, three secondaries to uh, go through that's right the extra canisters Nope. Oh, oh, well, uh, we saw a little crater sort procedure. of thing there. Uh, request you go ahead with the verb 76 it's not a crater, it's probably something volcanic. And and then the a lake. Let me see what lake that right. was probably. I think that was Lake Toya that we saw briefly. Don't know if we can okay, see it again uh, through the clouds. Uh, over to the left there, that roundish lake there. Also a nice roundish sort of mountain. Maybe if we look backwards since we get to this gap in the clouds. We do have to descend. We are descending, but we have to descend further. No need to hesitate. You can start now. Okay, well, we got some better okay. view here of what's going on. Think about powering down the pins. 
Okay, so there's... Uh, oh no, that's a smaller one. That's not Lake Toya. That is Lake Kutara. Which is smaller than Lake Toya. Lake Toya has an island in the middle. Okay, uh, we'd like to look at it for just a little while before we uh, power down the ping, so stand by. Incidentally, Lake uh, Kutara is apparently in the middle of Jigoku Dani, which the map translates as Hell Valley. Doesn't look too hellish to me, but what do I know? Maybe when it's all volcanic and everything, though. <laughs> He's taking all the photos. Definitely not leaving any film unused. Actually, the, a lot of the best photos came when the crews were leaving the moon because I think a lot of the time they were approaching the moon when the moon was on the nighttime side of the moon and they departed on the daylight side of the moon so at least for Apollo 11 and Apollo 12 I think the nicest moon photos with the full moon were on the departing leg which uh, Apollo 13 is on right now okay so that's a nice view of Tomakomai Houston, right below uh, us. Hours, uh, 45 minutes uh, now to the flight. Apollo 13, presently 115, uh, or uh, 11, throttle back quite a lot and start descending the seriously. Traveling at a velocity of 4,600 feet per second. You can see the airport, I think. Oh, that's right. That blasted, uh, service uh, Over, right at the top of the view. Oops, we don't want to descend too quickly. Jim, we have some status information for you, uh, if you're ready to copy on a piece of uh, scratch paper. I wonder if this has some air brakes. Doesn't appear so. Okay. Wouldn't have expected it though. Okay, uh, first uh, mid course correction uh, will probably be at GET 104 hours, and all we look for is a 4 to 6 feet per second delta V. Okay, that's the first item. Now I will. Uh, the airport on down. the right Simple is one. our new Chitose. The airport on the left is uh, RJCJ. Okay, in the LEM, you have. Uh, Which is Chitose. So is there's Chitose and new Chitose. They sort of look like one airport with four runways to me, but what do uh, I know? That means over 61 hours. That would ex average out to 24.5 amps. We expect after power down that you will use 1.4 or 14 amps per hour. And clouds. And, <laughs> and that would leave a reserve of 500 amp hours at the end of the uh, mission. Are you with me? Well, I'm through with you. Okay, in the LEM, 
you Roger. have Raj in the limb. You have 215, that is 215 pounds of water usable. <clears throat> that would average out over 61 hours to 3.5 pounds per hour available. Okay. Uh, nice view of the airport though. It even says New Chitose right there, just in case there's any doubt. I want to distinguish these two runways from the old Chitose. <laughs> I mean, it's, it looks like one airport to me again, but uh, yeah. Okay. They have two different codes. That's at 14 amps per hour electrical usage rate. And as a city of Chitose. Uh, one note, uh, this does not, when we speak here of uh, water available, this does not include CSM water and PLIS water. So that's added on. Okay, ne next, LIOH. Using the CSM cans, you will have 16 cans at 12 hours per can to give you 192 or 192 hours of LIOH. And uh, in the LEM, using its cans, you have 44 hours remaining. Uh, Vance, is that with the PLIS uh, secondaries? That's a firm. That's a firm. That includes plus secondaries. Okay, a lot of blinking because of the clouds. I think it's time okay, to go into oxygen. the cockpit and everything. Uh, you have remaining 44 pounds in the limb. Uh, at a usage rate of 0.36 pounds Come on. per hour, that leaves All right, you that's a good view. Or one two zero hours of oxygen. Okay, next RCS. Uh, RCS A stands at six two percent, and B at six two percent. Uh, we only expect. Uh, 2% to be used for the PTC, so you're in good shape for RCS. Next, dips delta V. You have 1190 feet per second remaining. And finally, CSM EPS. That's We estimate that you have 99 amp hours. That's an estimate. It might be turning a little bit too quickly. We'll see. And that's it. Uh, over. Okay, I copy. Okay, and uh, just uh, a question. Uh, be interesting to hear from. Uh, Jack to see if he thinks that uh, main B bus is good. Okay. Uh, if he has Flaps any down a bit. idea of how, of whether it's good or not. Oh, okay. Uh, That's a lot this, left. This would influence Here down. our steps in the future. For example, we might want to uh, try to test main B to see if it Flaps is down a bit more. so that we'd know how to set switches for entry. Yeah, I turned a little bit quickly, that's why we're doing all this on the turn. Plane's got a lot of margin between when you can deploy uh, the flaps and like where the stall speed is. 
Because it's got the straight wing okay. and everything. Probably a lot of body lift too. You can see the stall speed there, about 67 knots with the flaps deployed. Very nice. Deke says get a night's sleep. Uh, he says you've been working uh, hard and uh, you gotta relax a little bit and uh, be ready for tomorrow. Uh, ma'am, this is Jack. Go ahead, Jack. Okay, let me give you my observations on main bus B. Things happen pretty fast there. These trees, though, I'm pretty sure they're supposed to be clear. There's no, no way they're supposed to be here, but. The terminal is over to the left. Okay. And we're off the runway. Yay. I sort of want to see the terminal, actually. It looks pretty. It would look pretty good from higher up. I forget if uh, I probably it's uh, freeware scenery package. Thank you. I've got a few freeware scenery airports for Japan. I think I'll pause the audio there. That seems like okay. No, oh, that was a good break before he started starting. Oh, sorry, I was uh, dealing with the audio as we approach the terminal here. For once. Okay, this looks like a fair way to go, maybe. Oh, don't, don't overturn. I'm going a little bit fast. Yeah, uh, anyway, you can sort of see the, the terminal and it looks pretty good. Alright, well... With that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this flight. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.